Hello everyone. Today we'll be solving Cambridge IGCSE Chemistry Paper 2 Multiple Choice Extended Question number 21 to question number 40. In this video, we'll be solving May June 2020 Paper 2 to Variant. Guys, alright, so let's start. Guys, from question number 1 to question number 20 has been done in the part 1 video. If you haven't watched the part 1 video, I will put them in a playlist, alright? And definitely you can watch that particular video from there. Question number 21. Which process is not used in the preparation of an insoluble salt? So if we want to prepare an insoluble salt, all right, we definitely will have to use filtration. We'll have to wash that in uh, you know, a residue. We have to dry that residue. However, crystallization will not be required. So Question number 21C is the correct answer. Question 22. Which statement about group 1 and group 7 element is correct? Group 7 elements are monoatomic nonmetals. So uh, group 7 elements are, uh, you know, diatomic. So they are not monoatomic. So that's wrong. Lithium is more reactive with water than cesium. We know that down the group in sodium, in lithium, Sodium, potassium, or like cesium, down the group reactivity increases. Reactivity increases in, in this direction. So, this is a wrong statement. Is the melting point of group 1 metal increases down the group? We know that melting point of group 1 metal decreases down the group as we go down the group. So, this is wrong. All right, potassium bromide reacts with chlorine to produce a orange solution. Guys, this will be correct. All right, if we have potassium bromide, KBr, and we react with chlorine, then it will react to produce two potassium chloride. A displacement reaction will take place and bromine will be released. So Br2 aqueous will be produced and which will have an orange color. So D is the correct answer. Question number 23. The properties of the element titanium can be predicted from its position on the periodic table. Which row identifies the properties of titanium? Guys, titanium is a D block element. If you don't know what is D block element, definitely you know that it's a transition element. All right. So it's a transition metal. So, yes, uh, since it is a transition metal, can it be used as a catalyst? Yes, of course, it can be used. Conducts electricity when it is solid. Yes, it conducts electricity when it is solid. It has a low density. No, it has a very high density. Forms colored compounds. All right. Uh, yes, at, uh, you know, transition metals, they form colored compounds. So B will be the correct answer. Question number 24. Which diagram shows a mixture of noble gases? A noble gases is monoatomic. So B is wrong because it's a compound. This is a molecule. All right. And in D, it's a monoatomic gas, but it's not a mixture. All right. So A will be the correct answer. Guys, moving on. Question number 25. Which property is shown by all metals? So guys, all metals, they are extracted from their ores by heating with carbon. No, all metals cannot be extracted by heating with carbon. So that is a wrong statement. They conduct electricity. Yes, all metals conduct electricity. This is a correct statement. Uh, question number 25, B is correct. Let's see why C and D are wrong. They form acidic oxides. Guys, metals form basic oxides. So acidic oxide is wrong. They react with hydrochloric acid to form hydrogen. Not all metals are able to react with hydrochloric acid. Some of them are very unreactive and will not even react with hydrochloric acid at all. Many metal carbonates decompose when they are heated. Which row describes what happens when potassium carbonate, calcium carbonate, and copper to carbonate are heated using Bunsen burner? So, if we were to heat, uh, you know, potassium carbonate, it will not decompose. We know that in group one metal carbonate, specifically sodium carbonate and uh, potassium carbonate, do not decompose. It will, uh, it will not decompose. So, do not decompose. 
All right, calcium carbonate, it will decompose, all right, and copper to carbonate. However, you know, calcium carbonate will decompose. It will not be that easy. Calcium carbonate decomposes at a pretty high temperature, and copper to carbonate will decompose pretty easily, even using a Bunsen burner. So decomposes most easily will be copper to carbonate. Uh, decomposes with difficulty, all right, uh, with difficulty will be calcium carbonate. All right, and uh, decomp do not decompose at Bunsen burner temperature is potassium carbonate. So B will be the correct answer. Question number 27. Molten iron from the blast furnace contains impurities. All right. The process of turning the impure iron into steel involves blowing oxygen into the molten iron and adding calcium oxide. What are the reasons for blowing in oxygen and adding calcium oxide? So blowing in oxygen. All right. So basically impure carbon contains, uh, you know, carbon. Sorry, impure, uh, impure iron contains carbon. Uh, and the carbon impurities can be uh, removed by reacting it with oxygen. So blowing oxygen, the main reason that we are blowing in oxygen is that carbon is removed by reacting with oxygen. All right. And uh, adding calcium oxide. Uh, basically, what happens is that, uh, you know, it also contains silicon dioxide as an impurity and silicon dioxide is uh, acidic. So uh, basically, it reacts with acidic impurities and makes slag. So question number 27, A will be the correct answer. 28, four iron nails are added to four different metal sulfate solution. In which solution does a displacement reaction occur? So iron nails when added to copper sulfate, all right? So if we have iron that we add with copper sulfate, uh, we know that copper sulfate, copper is very unreactive. So it's gonna form iron sulfate and is gonna let copper free. So a displacement reaction will occur in copper sulfate. Magnesium is more reactive than iron, so it will not be able to displace. Uh, sodium and zinc, they are all more reactive than iron. So 28A is the correct answer. Question number 29. Which statement about pure water is not correct? It condenses at 100 degrees Celsius. Now, pure water does condense at 100 degrees Celsius. It boils, boils at 100 degrees Celsius. It condenses at 100, 100 degrees Celsius. All right. So, this is a correct statement. We, we have to look for not correct statement. So, wrong. It freezes at 0 degrees Celsius. Pure water freezes at 0 degrees Celsius. So, it's wrong. Uh, it turns cobalt to chloride paper blue. Now, once we add water to cobalt cl to chloride paper, which is already blue in color, it should become pink, not blue. So C is wrong, and we want to, we are looking for not correct. So twenty nine C will be the answer. All right, moving on. Question number thirty. Three processes in the carbon cycle are shown. Methane reacts with oxygen, producing carbon dioxide and water. All right. Okay, so this is uh, referred to as the the question says which process have taken place when methane reacts with oxygen producing carbon dioxide and water that is combustion. All right, so A and B can be the answer. Carbon dioxide and water are absorbed and used by plants to make oxygen. Guys, this is photosynthesis. So photosynthesis will take place, and oxygen is used by living things to release energy. Guys, this is respiration. So definitely and the third respiration will be correct. So combustion, photosynthesis, respiration. 30A will be the correct answer. 31. In the Haber process, nitrogen and hydrogen are reacted to make ammonia. Nitrogen, hydrogen producing ammonia. The forward reaction is exothermic, which condition produce the maximum yield of ammonia. All right. So to produce the maximum yield of ammonia, there are in the left hand side, there are four moles of uh, reactant and on the right hand side we have two moles of uh, product all right so pressure must be high and temperature must be low because this reaction is forward exothermic the backward is endothermic if we use high temperature then it will reverse the reaction so temperature must be low so b will be the correct answer 31 b number 32 which process used to prevent iron from rusting involves sacrificial protection so sacrificial protection, all right, is it does not occur in alloying, all right, it does not occur in painting, 
and uh, uh, you know sacrificial uh, protection does not also occur in electroplating because alloying you know uses unreactive metal or non-metals which then cause it to become you know different it gives it the ability to resist the corrosion electroplating you know is always done with un more unreactive metal and thereby allows it to resist corrosion painting does not involve any metal already it involves a polymer that coats it and prevents it from coming in contact with oxygen so galvanizing uses zinc as a coat and zinc is more reactive metal so that is a form of sacrificial protection 32 c will be the correct answer 33 a student suggests three uses of calcium carbonate or limestone manufacture of cement manufacture of iron treating alkaline soils which suggestions are correct all right you see for one and two it's correct number three is wrong because we do not use limestone to treat alkaline condition we rather use it for acidic condition so for acidic soils one and two correct three wrong all right guys moving on uh sorry for question number 33 a is the correct answer moving on to question number 34 one of the reactions used in the manufacture of sulfuric acid is two sulfur dioxide reacting with the oxygen to produce two sulfur trioxide which catalyst is used to increase the rate of reaction to increase the rate of reaction we can use vanadium pentaoxide v2o5 all right iron no magnesium peroxide no nickel no vanadium pentaoxide yes 34 c is the correct answer guys question number 35 ethanol is made on an industrial scale by the fermentation of sugars or by the reactions of ethene with steam in the presence of suitable catalyst so ethanol it is made on an industrial scale by the fermentation of sugars or by the reaction of ethene with steam in the presence of suitable catalyst what is a disadvantage of making ethanol from ethene rather than by fermentation so you know the disadvantage for uh, making ethanol from ethene would be that you know ethene is non-renewable all right first of all it is non-renewable okay high pressure involved all right which can be very costly so both of these can be very costly all right and costly in the long run as well so let's see a continuous production is used a continuous production is an advantage we are looking for disadvantage a non-renewable uh, raw material is used yes so question number 35 b is the correct answer the product is very pure is advantage the rate of reaction is very high this is also advantage only non-renewable raw material is disadvantage question number 35 b question number 36 which statement about compounds in the same homologous series is correct so compounds in the same homologous series all right uh they have the same chemical properties because they have the same number of carbon atoms you see in the same homologous series they do not have same number of carbon atoms carbon atoms gradually increases they have the same physical properties because they have the same number of carbon atoms again same number of carbon atoms will be cancelled they have different chemical properties because they have different number of carbon atoms all right so uh we have to understand that they have similar chemical properties all right any homologous series have similar chemical properties so that is wrong all right they have different physical properties because they have different number of carbon atoms that is correct because uh having different number of carbon atoms will give them different amount of uh you know different number of boiling point different amount of boiling point so 36 d question number 37 increasing the number of atoms in one molecule of hydrocarbon increases the amount of energy released when it burns what is the correct order all right so first of all the question says increasing the number of atoms in one molecule of hydrocarbon increases the amount of energy released when it burns all right so uh, if we increase the atoms now less energy released then uh, you know ethene c2h4 has six atoms and methane ch4 has five so definitely less energy will be in methane all right after that there will be ethene which is uh, you know uh, c2h4 thereby six all right and uh, and then uh, ethane which is c2h6 which has a total of eight 
So D will be the correct answer, guys. In methane, there is five. In methane, there is five atoms. In ethane, there is six atoms. And in ethane, there is eight atoms. 37D. Question number 38. An organic compound P reacts with zinc to produce a gas Q. What are P and Q? All right. So uh, organic compound P reacts with zinc. So organic compound, uh, you know, if it if it were to react with a metal, uh, all right, such as zinc, it has to be an uh, an organic acid. So P is ethanoic acid, and once it reacts with zinc, it will produce uh, you know hydrogen. All right. So B thirty eight B will be the correct answer. Question number thirty nine. Alkanes undergo substitution reaction in the presence of UV light. Which equation represents the substitution reaction of ethane? So ethane. All right, when it comes to ethane, all right, ethane reacting with chlorine produces ethane. This is a wrong. Uh, ethane reacting with uh, chlorine would produce chloroethane. Uh, all right, so uh, A is wrong because it does it produces ethane. B is correct. All right, because we can see one of the hydrogen got substituted. There were six hydrogen here. Now five hydrogen and one got substituted with chlorine. HCl is the product. Ethane reacting with chlorine to produce dichloro. This is double substitution and it's not in a single process. So we'll cross that out. Ethane reacting with HCl is not going to react with HCl. All right. So neither is going to release hydrogen as an end product. All right. So B is the correct answer. Question number 39, B. Guys, what we did is normal ethane reacting with chlorine. Chloroethane is supposed to be produced and HCl is produced along with that. Question number 40. Which substances are natural polymers? We know that proteins are natural polymers, carbohydrates are natural polymers, nylon and polyethylene, they're artificial. So one and two, A is the correct answer. Guys, thank you for watching this particular video. Uh, you know when you were when you were watching this particular uh, you know when this particular video was uploaded uh our channel had 248 members so you know if you want uh, if you like the video then obviously subscribe to the channel all right help this particular channel grow and guys even uh, you know uh, keep watching the videos all right that helps a lot for the channel all right it works as a lot of inspiration for me uh thank you see you in the next video bye bye